Till my heart starts racing But I don't know if I like this chasing And playing and waiting around It's a shame that my hands start shaking All of the time when you're around me But this time, this time Welcome back to the Moran family. So today's video is going to be a Q&A all about baby, all about my pregnancy because I am pregnant with baby number four. So I do have three girls, Layla who is six, Aurora who is two, and Everly is my angel baby. She would have been eight months. And now I am currently pregnant with my rainbow baby. So the first question that's probably the most asked question is, when is my due date? So this baby is due October 30th, which is so exciting because that's the day before Halloween. And if you guys know me, Halloween is my favorite holiday, hands down. I love everything about it. The weather, the scary movies, the tricks, the treats, trick or treating, um, haunted mazes, literally everything. I'm obsessed with Halloween. It is my favorite. So we'll see when this baby is due. I've never gone over my due date. How many weeks are you? So today, as I'm filming this, it's April 21st. And I am I'm pulling up my baby app because I'm 12 weeks and 12 weeks and four days. How did you know you were ready to try again? So this one is kind of a complicated answer. After Everly passed away, I honestly wasn't sure I wanted to be a mom again. I just couldn't envision being pregnant again. I couldn't see myself going through that pain possibly again. I just, I couldn't see myself being a mom again, honestly. But after a while, when I started working through my grief, I started, you know, talking to my husband. I was more open with my feelings because it takes a lot for me to be open with my feelings, which I know is kind of hard for you guys to understand because I'm very open on YouTube, but sometimes I have a hard time communicating my feelings. So as time went on, me and my husband started talking more and more, and I was really able to just, you know, open up to him. As time went on, I noticed going past the baby aisle didn't necessarily make me sad anymore. Talking about Everly, brought me joy instead of just sadness. Um, I started to envision the possibility of another baby being in our house. I started imagining what it would be like being pregnant again. And just thoughts like that didn't necessarily make me sad anymore. It kind of made me excited for the future. Feeling like I was ready again, I had to feel it in my heart. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's true. It just wasn't a quick decision. It wasn't like I woke up one day and I was like, all right, I'm ready to have a baby, let's just go ahead and do it. Like me and my husband talked about it for a while and for a while there we weren't on the same page. Like I had some days where I would tell him I'm ready for another baby. Even though I knew I wasn't, it's just my arms felt really empty and I knew I said I wanted a baby for not necessarily the right reasons. And there were times where my husband would say, okay, I'm ready for a baby, let's go ahead and try like right now. Even though I knew he wasn't ready either. We were just saying that because we were so hurt and our arms were longing to hold our daughter Everly again. So we had to really, you know, move past those feelings and work through them. And we had to wait until we were ready to try for a baby for the right reasons. When did you take a pregnancy test before or after Miss Period? So I actually have all of that information saved in my phone. I've been documenting like my whole first trimester because I think I want to film a entire first trimester like video for you guys because I get a lot of questions on how like I've been feeling and I'm almost out of my first trimester already because in a couple days already be 13 weeks. So I believe I'm technically in my second trimester, 14 weeks, so I'm super close. So I think I wanna film that video for you guys. So I have like everything saved in my phone. So I tested positive February 18th, which was 
five days before my expected period. How are your appointments with the virus going around? So for my appointments, you have to wear a face mask. They won't even like let you in the building without a mask because they have like a little booth set up where, you know, they monitor everybody coming into the building. They make sure you're not sneezing and coughing, all of that stuff. And then another thing too is Benny unfortunately can't go into my appointments with me, which makes me so sad because he missed a lot of appointments with Everly because he's in the military and we were in the process of PCSing. So we were in the process of moving from Hawaii to California. So if you kept up with my videos during that time, you know it was a crazy time because I had to fly out without him and he had to stay. So we were separated for months. So he missed a lot of appointments with Everly. So with this baby, He's also missing out on ultrasound appointments, which makes me so sad. I wish he was able to go into the appointments with me because pregnancy after loss is really hard. So a lot of my appointments are nerve wracking. I have anxiety going to the doctors. I really wish I had that support and he was able to go in the room with me. So only patients are allowed in. Another thing too is once I get to my doctor's office, I don't have to sign in, I don't have to touch anything. They literally put me in a room right away so I'm not in any waiting room. They also are not booking multiple patients at once so every single time I've gone into one of my OB appointments, I've never come across another patient. Are you going to do a gender reveal? Yes, I am. I am not too sure how I'm going to do it. Originally, since this is our rainbow baby and we weren't around family with Everly, so we didn't get to do like a big gender reveal. The plan was to have a big party at our house, have all of our friends and family over and do like a big gender reveal. But everything going on with the virus, we obviously can't have people over at our house right now. So I think we're going to kind of just do what we did with Everly. I'm going to order some cannons like confetti cannons or smoke cannons something like that and then we're gonna just literally go in the backyard and pop them off and then i'll film it for you guys upload that were you afraid to try again 100 percent, i was terrified to try again but i knew in my heart i was ready to take that step and i knew i wanted a baby but yes 100 percent, i was terrified are you considered high risk Yes, I am. My pregnancy got flagged immediately as high risk as soon as they learned the disorders that Everly had. So I am being monitored closely, but I'm not going in for more appointments than any other normal pregnancy would. Just because everything that's going on with the virus, they don't really want patients to be coming in like every single week just to you know be on the safe side my doctor also has been ordering a lot of testing just to make sure everything is okay with this baby so you guys know i did get my non-invasive prenatal test done i also did get my glucose test done very early i think i was only like 10 weeks she just wants to make sure that me and the baby are okay so i've been having a lot of testing done earlier than i normally would and then my doctor also ordered us to go see the genetics counselor just to go over everything with us also i like i said i got the non-invasive prenatal test done and then i'm also going in tomorrow actually for more testing just to make sure the baby is okay and then me and Benny are also getting tested to see if we are carriers for the gene for holoprosencephaly. Are you considering having a CBS procedure this time? 100% no, unless I need to. I never want to go through that again. I do have a video up on my channel of the CBS procedure. If you guys want to check that out, I'll leave it de linked down below. But that was so terrifying and uncomfortable that was probably the scariest thing i've ever done so if this baby's ultrasound looks abnormal and they see something again then possibly i would consider getting a cbs procedure done again but if all of my like non-invasive prenatal testing comes back normal and all of my ultrasounds look good then i would never willingly get a cbs procedure because it's so scary and I just, the girl's excited. 
so excited. I think a lot of people took Layla's reaction the wrong way. A lot of you guys thought she was very like anti-baby and she wasn't happy about this baby. That was 100% not the case. Before I actually found out I was pregnant, both Aurora and Layla, both of them, were asking us for a baby. I don't even know where Aurora learned this from. I don't know if Layla was telling her to ask us for a baby, but they both kept asking for a baby brother. So when they found out I was pregnant again, they were so happy. So when you guys saw the video of us telling Layla, I definitely thought she was going to be more excited, but I 100% understand where she was coming from in that video because I felt the same when I found out I was pregnant. Obviously, I knew there was a possibility I was pregnant because I was trying, but once it becomes real, all of the fears just set in. What symptoms did you have before testing? So a lot of you guys were actually shocked because I did share this answer on Instagram. Like I said, I tested positive five days before my expected period and I actually did have symptoms before testing and a lot of you guys were shocked that I was already having symptoms that early. But I was like that with Layla too. I tested positive with Layla six days before my expected period and I was having a lot of symptoms with her too. My symptoms before testing was I was dizzy so much, especially if I stood up too fast. I had to like just stand there and close my eyes and take a minute because I thought I was going to pass out. I was so dizzy for like a week straight and I didn't know why. Like I thought for sure my iron was low and I thought I was anemic because I was that way when I was pregnant with Aurora. I was so dizzy to the point where I had to sit down when I was getting ready in the mornings because it was so bad. I also was really nauseous like one day randomly. Um, usually, I think it's because I don't eat the best to be honest. Usually, I'm even when I'm not pregnant, I'm a little bit nauseous before I go to bed. But this nausea was different. It was like when I woke up all the way till I went to bed and it just would not go away even when I was eating. So that was another symptom I had. Another one was I had headaches on and off and they would not go away. I tried taking Tylenol, I tried drinking water, I tried eating, I tried taking naps. Nothing helped my headaches, so that was another symptom that I had. And then the last symptom that I had before testing positive was for about three days I was cramping on and off. Are your symptoms different than your previous pregnancies? 100% yes, which kind of makes me think I am having a boy too. Just because this pregnancy has been so different. I don't want to go into too much detail because like I said, I do want to film a first trimester like recap of how I've been feeling and stuff. But yes, 100% this pregnancy has been different. The cravings have been different. My symptoms have been different. Just everything has been different. So this pregnancy definitely has me thinking maybe it's a boy, but at this point, I don't know, we'll see. How do you cope with being pregnant after a loss? You kind of just have to take it one day at a time and you have to let yourself feel those feelings because all of my feelings are valid and I know they are normal. I know it's normal to be stressed. I know it's normal to be scared. I know it's normal to have certain things like trigger you. I know all of the feelings that I've been feeling is normal. So I just take things one day at a time. I try not to stress and I try not to dwell on the negative thoughts because I know stressing isn't good for the baby. So when I'm having a hard day, I just really lean on my husband and he gives me a break. He kind of like takes over everything with the girls. So yeah, that's kind of my way of coping is I just kind of give myself a break, talk to my husband about it. I don't really do like laundry that day. I don't do like dishes. I just really relax and take that time for myself. Would you want to be a girl mom or do you want a boy? So I get this question 
a lot. The thought of being a boy mom kind of like freaks me out a little bit because I've literally never had to take care of a baby boy because my mom has like all girls. She does have one boy, but my brother is older than me. So I've never had to take care of a baby boy. So just the thought of like having a boy is so like unknown to me. But I think having a boy would be so exciting, but also having another girl would be exciting too. I think overall, all I really want is a healthy baby. So yeah, it could go either way and I would be happy either way. Do you think you'd want any more kids or would this be your last baby? Um, Me and my husband are kind of leaning towards this is our last baby, at least for a while. But I also don't want to go past 30 and having, you know, a newborn. So I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because we are still young. But at the moment, we are leaning more towards this is our last baby. You and Benny said y'all were trying for two months. Did you guys do anything specific to conceive fast? No, I wasn't like testing my ovulation or anything. I was keeping track of my periods just because... My periods have been really irregular. I did breastfeed my children and I breastfed both Layla and Aurora for an entire year each. And for that whole year, I didn't get my period. And then when I was still breastfeeding Aurora, I didn't get my period back. And then I ended up getting pregnant with Everly. And then obviously I didn't have my period the entire time I was pregnant with Everly. So I finally got my period after Everly and as you guys can imagine after not having a period for like over two years My periods were insane and they were so all over the place So I was keeping track of my periods, but I wasn't tracking like ovulation or anything I wasn't taking any ovulation test strips. Yeah, we weren't doing anything specific And also I do want to say I know a lot of you guys that watch me have been trying for years and my heart is with you I'm sending you guys love, sending you guys all the baby dust and prayers. Next question says, I just hit my 19th week mark and opted to not do genetic screening. I figured my baby will come the way God intended him to. What's your take on it now after carrying out your last pregnancy, knowing her condition? So you guys know I actually already did go in for some genetic testing. And then I'm going in for more genetic testing for this baby. So I personally would want to know as soon as possible if something is wrong with this baby that way we can prepare and we can take the necessary steps to possibly bring home this baby so i personally would want to know as soon as possible i liked knowing everything about everly as early as we found out i did find out everything at the 10 week mark with her so i liked knowing early because i was able to mentally prepare myself for the possibility of not bringing her home. I was mentally able to prepare myself for possibly bringing home a baby with medical conditions. So I liked knowing that way I was fully prepared of what's to come. Another thing too is I liked the fact that I was able to talk to my kids about everything because I feel like we were able to go through all of the feelings over time during my pregnancy rather than not knowing and then I gave birth to Everly and she passed away and then my kids would be extremely confused and I feel like that would have hurt them more because we wouldn't have had time to process things we wouldn't have had time to talk about things as a family are you staying with the same doctors as you had with Everly no, we are not. A lot of people ask me why we switched doctors and it's because my doctors with Everly are about a three hour drive away. So that's just not doable, especially if I were to go into labor. That is way too long of a drive. So if you guys kept up with my videos during that time when I was pregnant with Everly, I was living with my mom because we are a military family. We were in the middle of moving states. We were in the middle of moving from Hawaii to California and I needed to get the proper care and doctors for Everly. So I ended up moving down to California first with the girls and I was living with my mom for a few months while Benny was wrapping up everything in Hawaii. And then we had to find like a house when he was finally in California. So it was a really crazy time for us. So 
now that we are living in our own house, I don't go to those same doctors because they're so far away. Are the COVID-19 limitations going to affect your delivery? So my delivery is still months from now, towards the end of the year. My due date is October 30th. So we haven't even talked about labor and delivery yet. So I'm not sure. Why did you have such an early glucose test? Do you have a history of GD? No, I do not. My doctor is just taking extra precautions with everything that happened with Everly. So that's why I had my glucose test done early, just to make sure that it comes back normal just to give us peace of mind. So that's why I had it super early. Do you feel any guilt getting pregnant so fast after Evie? Um, no, I don't. And honestly, I feel like we didn't get pregnant super fast. Everly would have been eight months, going on nine months. So I don't think we got pregnant super fast. Will you incorporate Everly's name into the new baby's name? I think this question is a little odd. So does Benny. He thinks it's a little odd too. Um, even though Everly is not physically in our arms, she is still her own person. Like she is still our child. So just like our other two daughters have their own separate names, Everly is going to have her own separate name too. So no, this new baby is not going to have Everly's first name or middle name. If you find out you're having a boy, are y'all done having kids for good? So this is another question that I find a little odd. We are not having more kids for the sake of trying to have a boy. Like we're having more kids just for the fact that we want more kids. So even if this is a boy, there is still a possibility that we may want more kids in the future. Like just because we get our boy doesn't mean, yep, we're done, we're, we're good now. Will you be doing pregnancy updates and a birth vlog? Yes and yes. I love looking back at all of my pregnancy videos with Everly. I love having those on my channel. I wish I started my YouTube channel sooner. That way I could have all of Layla's pregnancy updates on here and Aurora's pregnancy updates. But unfortunately, I didn't start my channel sooner like I wanted to. But yes, I will try to document as much as I can with this baby because I love having all of those memories to look back on. How does it feel to be pregnant again after Everly? Uh, a lot of emotions. I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm scared, I'm nervous. Um, it's just a lot of emotions. Some days I'm more scared than excited. Other days I'm more excited than scared. Um, it just, it's a lot of emotions, but overall I'm so thankful and blessed to be pregnant again. After going through a loss like that, you start to realize that no pregnancy is guaranteed to go all the way to the end. You're not guaranteed a baby at the end. Sorry, I don't want to get all choked up here, but after going through a loss like that, you just realize even though you're pregnant again, you're not guaranteed to leave the hospital with full arms. So some days I am scared, but like I said, I try not to dwell on those thoughts. So I'm just taking it one day at a time and I'm just trying to celebrate this pregnancy as much as I can. And I'm just blessed every single day that passes with this little baby. All right guys, well that is it for this Q&A. That is all of the questions that I'm going to be answering today. If I didn't get to your question for some reason, you can leave it down below and I'll get back to you guys. Aurora is joining me for the outro. It's her favorite part, huh? <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you guys are subscribed yeah. to the Murad Family. <laughs> Make sure you hit that bell, that way you guys always get notified every single time we upload. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys! Bye. Oh, you want to do it?